Hello everyone, how are you? I'm Diego Gonzalez El Flaco and I'm really happy to be here with you again. Today I'm going to share with you how to create a vertical bar chart. Uh, my idea is that yeah, I want to show you how to create it, but in case you don't know too much about Figma and you want to have the file there, or maybe you don't have time, you, you may know a lot of uh, Figma, but you don't have time, uh, you can just skip this video, go ahead and go to my uh, Figma community link and you will find there the file. And you now I have the opportunity to sell content so you can buy it there. Uh, you can just go ahead and access to it. I will be very grateful for your purchase and for your feedback especially because that will allow me to continue creating quality and valuable content like this for you and the whole com uh, community. So let's jump into it. Let me show you what we have here. We have the widget. This is the, the element, the table, which is just a frame with a auto layout. And we have three special elements there, the header, the graphics, and the vertical indication. What are the vertical indicators? Are these ones? And you have here the graphics and the header right just those one what do we have here inside of it we have the data sets elements which are the whole data set here right the bars the name and the containers and here we have inside the data set we have the bars container the label of course and inside the bars container we have this one why i have all these elements like this because as you and there's, uh, you may remember, and also this is the other reason that I, which I don't have this like a component. When you have a component, you cannot adjust this with from the instance. You cannot adjust the height or the width. Those are the things that you cannot. You can change a lot of things, but that specifically one no. So that's why I also create this uh, like just a widget, a frame directly, and I. I am not used to create a component there. The case that I, in the, when I do that is when I just need to replicate it, but I'm not gonna change anymore the bars there. So I just leave it this like it is, so you can just follow the, the, the way that I'm gonna show you today. So here I have the data set and I put it duplicated because here you will understand that this is the one that you can duplicate or delete it the same with the elements here, the bars, the bar container, you can duplicate this in the case that you want to have more bars inside of a same data set. And the, in this one, you will control the height. And I will show you here ex directly why I'm using this in that way. That could be a little bit complicated with a lot of nested elements, but here's what we have. Here we have the horizontal resizing, which let's say that you have your your whole um, frame there, right? This one. And the idea is that if you build it in this way, you will have the opportunity to resize it, right? Of course, all these elements, let me show you, I have here a row. Inside of this row, I have the table widget, which is uh, with a fill element. And here, the row is, is the one that is also with fill, but the whole element or component is the one that is adjustable there. The key here, of course, is to have these constraints um, fixed or, yeah, the, with the left and right top and bottom uh, configuration that will allows you to adjust the elements inside of it, right? Uh, what are the other thing, important things here that I struggled with it a lot at the beginning is that I have here the vertical resizing without affecting the height of the or the percentage that we have here. What happens if I just go directly and only use outer layout? If you remember, and I struggled with this a lot at the beginning, if I adjust this with outer layout, which would be something like, I'm, I'm gonna mimic it with this one. It would be something like this. Remember that we have only the fixed or the, um, or the hog or the, the fill or the fixed element there. So in that case, what would happen is that if I adjust the height, 
the element will having the same side. And if I use the field, it will be a uh, backwards. The, the 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 other the space will be fixed. So I needed is something that helped me to always have the, the value there. So let's say it that I here put it in a scale. So I needed this without auto layout. The auto layout is in the in the father here, but in the um, in the nested elements what I have here is just constraints with a scale. That's why I can control this if I put here 80. It doesn't matter where it is you will always have here the value that you set at the beginning that was really hard for me i always if i had to readjust the the height always had to go one by one adjusting the elements there now with this option it's really simple to to manage uh, that case right let me show you just another examples that you will find here you will have uh, just some samples uh, trying to use different layout there also you can find things like this one uh, the more the, the less space you have the recommendation of course is to even or not use it in long um, even a name here or just simple uh, letters to indicate whatever you need there those are just uh, examples that you can follow there also with more um, bars per data set with their own labels there and here you will have three different styles the Roboto style, the smooth style with the corners rounded or just uh, if you want to have a monthly progress or things like that you can just adjust them there here I'm just missing one uh, label and I needed to add it here yeah so as you see it's really easy to handle and just feel free to copy them you the, what you are gonna do is to copy the one that you like and place it in the in your file and of course adjust whatever you want there just feel free to contact contact me back in any question that you have and I will be really happy to help you with this and I hope you to enjoy it. Thank you very much. See you next time.